welcome to the Unapologetic Queen Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're um, leading the. We are two melanated women leading a conversation and uh, shamelessly discussing the norms and standards placed on us by society. Indeed. Thank you all for liking and supporting the show. Um, thank you for telling your friends about us and loving on us and texting and supporting us. And thank you for following us at, on Instagram at Unapologetic Queens. And follow me and Talia at Talia the Takeover on Instagram and Mama underscore Ankh. All right. So, Christina, what's going on with you this week? How's this past week been, girl? I mean, it's pretty pretty good. We had to celebrate your birthday real quick this weekend. Shout out to 23-year-old Ty, because last week y'all saw 22-year-old Ty. Yeah, I this, did. This oh, my God, you guys growing up with me. <laughs> guys. She's now a whole year older. <laughs> right. But how about you, Ty, besides your birthday? What's going on? You know, I'm grown now. So I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm just right now in the process of getting my life, you know, still doing my thing, grinding. Uh, my internship at the National Alliance is about to end soon, so that's about to be the blow financially, <laughs> but it's okay because God prevails. So <laughs> always, always. And, yeah, and basically just spending a lot of time with family and friends and reflecting over this weekend. This weekend was kind of hectic, even though it was my birthday. A lot of events occurred this weekend. So Unfortunate events very unfortunate events. Um, actually, I do, I forgot something. I would like to give a special rest in peace shout out to a young man who was in my graduating class in high school named Tyler. He passed away, he had cancer Monday. And so I know the class of 2011, you know, the way our class is close mm -hmm. at Howard, our class is close too. So I feel the same way. Shout right. out to John F. Kennedy Memorial High shout School. Shout out to Upper Derby High School. <laughs> hey, Tina Fey. Boop. Okay. Girl, you got me. <laughs> But no, y'all popping because <laughs> John F. Kennedy High School has Christina. Okay, prestigious hello. You know what I mean. <laughs> All right, so of course what we have to do naturally is dive right into events that have occurred since we last had the chance to be on air with you, and we are going to begin with something that is heavy on a lot of people's hearts, which is the tragedy that took place in Atlanta or in Orlando. I said Atlanta, Orlando. Yeah. So, so I've believe the final count was 50 people dead and 53 people injured at Pulse nightclub which was a gay club that was having their latin night so everybody went there to have their good time and of course it was pride weekend so you know the gay community was celebrating i mean it's been a good year for the gay community because of you know the marriage laws being passed and equal rights for gay people so shout out to y'all but yeah, shout out to lgbt lgbt brothers and sisters but basically there's been a lot of interesting conversation that has occurred in the wake of this entire incident from the political side from the religious side um and it's been very interesting so let's begin with the religious side what have you heard what comments have you seen on the book of faces because our generation only just tends to talk on social media about things and not in person but you know i sleep okay. what have you heard i mean well i did see a very strong worded comment from um yolanda adams bashing all the people who were um saying that you know this happened because they were gay and that, that you know since god doesn't like gay people which is which obviously isn't true, that this is why this happened. And she said, you know, basically that God loves all people and the fact that anyone can sit here and justify this malicious attack mm -hmm. by saying that it's because of someone's sexual orientation that they should have, that they deserved such a horrible traumatic experience that is crazy because that's not God's word. Indeed, I know. Um, Bishop T.D. Jakes sent out made a statement i was pleasantly surprised by that as well and um just basically showing support and solidarity for all, all of that all the people in whose families were, were affected by the events in, in orlando and so i think it's interesting a lot of people have been on one side there has been a lot of negative 
comments made, like you said, people saying this is what they deserve and other things like that. I even saw a video last night of a preacher, I want everyone to see, saying that he felt that there's he felt that it was good that there were less pervs in the world and that he thinks it's a good thing and he feels like they should all that we should round them all up and put them again and show them to the firing squad all right and you have the nerve to stand in a pulpit every sunday and and fix your mouth to say that exactly and this is why many people you know shun away from the church because there are judgmental people who will sit there and commit their own sins in the dark and then the dark. condemn everyone else for in the light their, in the light exactly and that's that's the problem because i sat back and watched this video and i my jaw was dropped like excuse you how dare you even begin and so then that that caused the conversation of well if that's how you feel then don't pray for us then don't say these same, because a lot of people are saying that these same leaders who wouldn't pass laws to, for the protection of the LGBT community are now saying that they're praying for Orlando. And a lot of people were saying, we don't want your prayers. And I know I personally got into a little bit of debate about that because I'm like, wait a minute, you can't tell me that you don't want my prayers. So that's another conversation that's brought up. So do you feel like a lot of people were saying that, you know, you can love the sinner and hate the sin? What do you think about that? I mean... I think people forget that we're all sinners. Mm-hmm. So if you're not loving other people, then you're not, you're, you can't that love is a sin. Like, right, exactly. exactly. So it's just like, how can you sit here? Most people call it the pot calling the kettle black because you're out here lying, cheating, stealing, doing whatever. But as soon as it comes down to someone's sexual orientation, which most times people cannot change, people, for most people, it is not a choice. How can you sit here and say you can't love them because of what they, because of who they are? Exactly. Hate the sin. Do you hate your own sin? And then some people sit back and talk about, oh, it's a lifestyle choice. Well, premarital sex is a lifestyle choice. So, like, what, 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 are we, what conversation are we really having? Because exactly. we're reading the same Bible. We're all wrong. <laughs> and out of order. Okay. So how dare you? even begin to say anything about anyone as if all sin is not the same that's the problem i have but where do you think this where do you think the root of this comes from because you know how back in way back when premarital sex used to be the big like one of the biggest things that people were condemned for like if somebody was pregnant actually for example in augusta georgia there was a high school for pregnant girls because they weren't allowed to go to the same high school if they became pregnant. So that was a huge, big, scarlet letter type sin. So then that changed. Because as time goes on, we people's cares change. change. Like back, back in the Old Testament, <laughs> women weren't allowed to speak in church. There was a reason for that. But at the same time, we're not going to... When people try to sit here and bring out the Old Testament saying, yeah, women should be silent in the church, and that's why you can't have women preachers, does that make any sense in 2016? Because we are loud, wild, and free, and we will not be silent. So there is a time and a place. For everything. For everything. I'm just wondering when this is going to end. Like, people haven't completely gotten over the premarital sex thing, even after it coming to light. Um, people haven't completely gotten over it at all, to be very honest. And then, you know, people get pregnant and everybody's giving them the side eye in church. But when that baby's born, everybody's like, oh, my God. Right. Chill. But I'm wondering when people are going to become accepting of that in church or if ever that will be a thing. What do you think? I don't know. That's a good one. That's really a good one because, I mean, it, I think it would be – up to the point where that generation that truly and wholeheartedly mm-hmm. believes it is just not there anymore. And that, and that's sad to say because a lot of times you can't change someone's mind who's like 60, 70 years old. You've been thinking this way for 70 years. How are you about to change my mind now here in 2016, you little young whippersnapper? Right, you little young whippersnapper. Who, <laughs> what, are you, what you talking about, who are, who are you to tell me how to worship and read the Bible and do all this and judge people like which is also a sin so alas i I slumber but no i was wondering the same i was wondering the same thing because i'll be very honest i have some lgbt christians that i know 
who strive to live out live the way Jesus did way more than 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 the majority of straight people I know to be very honest they're loving they're kind they give you know and but you want to call them out because they're gay if you're not doing what you're doing in love then how are how are you being a good Christian if you say that you if you say that you're a follower of Christ and Christ said to love and that was his biggest commandment was to love and you're not being loving how this way <laughs> how especially we're like we're definitely going diving in on this particular portion of it because Christina and I both grew up in the church so which church did you grow up in Christina St. James AME Zion for <laughs> For those who don't know what AME means, it's African Methodist, Methodist Episcopal. Hey, now, say okay. it loud for the people. In okay. the back. I didn't grow up in AME Zion Church. Though. I was baptized Baptist. My mother and I went to the AME Church. And I remember seeing a few members of the congregation who I knew. <laughs> I, but you know, when you're little, you don't really know what it is. You were just like, and but the thing is, they were popping. They served. They were just lit. They were popping. I remember one in particular. I don't want to call him out, but he was he was one of my favorite people. He was one of my favorite people in the entire church. But, and another reason why people shut away from the church, you will find the fakest people Bruh. in church. You will find the fakest. The fakest people. And it's, it's true. It's funny. It really is. I've seen y'all Snapchats on Saturdays in church worshiping on Sundays. Can't say I haven't been guilty, but hey, now at least we own it. And not even <laughs> just that, because, you know, we're all going to, we all live our lives how mm-hmm. we choose. But it's like, Back to the love thing. If you're not going to sit here and love on your fellow and on your neighbor in your church, mm-hmm. you're going to sit here and hate and side talk eye, whisper, blessing and hearts, all of all that this, foolishness, all this and that, but still be like, Jesus is my savior. Is he though? Especially most of us are hot and cold and hot. Uh, I mean, most of us are lukewarm when it comes to our faith and. Bible says that he'd rather us be hot or cold. So, boop. <laughs> well, Everyone reflect and think on that one because that's crazy. But it has caused major war. Like a, one of our fellow classmates has really been calling people out about not either A, not speaking on this topic at all, not even saying any type of rest in peace, not any condolence or, condolences or anything. And I, I have to say that I really do agree with that because regardless of what you believe, people still lost their lives. That's 50 futures that are gone. 50 like, families that are mourning. And period. actually, our classmate lost a, a childhood friend in the massacre that took place in Orlando. So this is high-key personal. And it should be personal for anyone because at the end of the day, this is humanity. Exactly. And it's, it's sad that we live in America where every day there's a mass shooting, but nobody reports it. Mm-hmm. And we're just desensitized to it. We're at just this like, point, yeah. It's like... Oh, there's another. That, what, another one. What shooting happened? I so, thought that one. So, what do you think this is going to do for gun laws? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. A lot of people are saying that they want to get, like, some people are saying they want to get rid of guns. I some would. people are saying, I g- agree with getting rid of military style weapons. I think Period. all. American people, including the police, should not have guns. Period. We've lost our like. You know how a child the right to bear arms. Yeah, exactly. We've lost it. Like so, a child, Christina, you you're trying to put America on punishment. No, for real. Give you me your gun. <laughs> Give me your gun. Take them all away because nobody knows how to act with guns. Like no one knows how to act. My with whole guns. thing with that is, if I don't have one, I don't know who has them. You know what I mean? Someone's always going to have them. And I've lived in England, and England is a country that legally is not allowed to have guns. So instead of having a lot of gun violence, they have a lot of knife violence. So it does change. It doesn't happen at you know at the Overnight. mass level of numbers uh, as mass shootings do in America. But the the level of violence, the, that's one thing that people have to worry about is getting shanked, and that's in, intense. Exactly. And I think Kayla told me, Shout out to Kayla. That in Canada, there have been eight mass shootings over the past, like, 10, 20 years in America. <laughs> How many <laughs> happened last week? Like, and it's, it is not funny at all. It's just, like, it's the fact that we sit here every day and we expect somebody to die. And that's the part that's sad. Exactly. Especially the one thing I always get is, like, I low-key have anxiety living in the nation's capital. 
Because I'm like, anything, when I'm on the metro, I'm like, anything could pop off at any time, and I'm sitting in this very tight enclosed space. And I just want to know how people have access to these things. A lot of my family members are from the South, right? You know, I'm one of the few people born up here, and they don't play about that right to bear arms. But you don't, that's for the protection of your house. That's because you know that you're, that someone who's not you has one. So if you're not strapped, that's a problem. And so, and then some people are like, oh, if they take away the guns, they're going to be, it's going to become like the Hunger Games. You know, can't say I don't think about that right. either. But, and then. Because I, I don't trust, I don't, I don't. Mm. People who believe in that right, though, they usually go about getting guns the right way. The right way. Because I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. People may hate me for this, but I do believe in the right to bear arms. I do. However, you have no reason to need military style weapons. Period, point blank, end of conversation. Do not pass, go, do not collect $200. You just don't need it. It's not necessary. I believe in the right to bear arms. Like, for example, a lot of people go hunting. A lot of people, you know, there's other reasons to use guns. I don't know, target practice, that's awkward. But I mean, I just, <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't agree with military. Like, how can you walk into Walmart and be able to buy a killing machine like that? Why is it that in Southeast, a child, uh, children were shot yesterday by other children with military, with military style weapons? And who's giving them to them? That's the thing. And that's what people need to talk about. But I'm going to sip my tea. But who is, how are people getting access to this, especially illegally? You know? And that's the part that I don't trust. Because whoever is bringing, bringing these illegal weapons to these neighborhoods has access so I'm not going to not have access to And how do these kids that ha- have no access to fresh food or water. clean water or books have access to military-style guns? Does that make sense to anyone? Why Anyone why with the put, half a brain. Right. Why would like, this much like, emphasis. stock into guns? Yes. And, you know, somebody made a good point and said that uh, people forget that the founding fathers of this country – were all, were mo- the majority were in war, so a lot of them had PTSD. So of course they would believe in the right to bear arms. And I was like, that's an interesting thought. That is true. I mean, a lot of wars were fought in America. Yeah, on this soil. Yeah. During that time, so I mean, that makes more sense. It was sense. like you know, and you know, if you. Th- <laughs> this sounds so terrible, but I used to. Re- okay, so think about when you were younger and you would read history books, and it was like. People used to literally die every day, B. Like, it was just a part of life. Like, I remember being in the show Our Town, and, like, Our Town, like, the main character's brother died because his appendix burst on a camping trip. She died. Sorry if you've never seen Our Town, but whatever. She died in childbirth. You know, people were dying every day. So I don't, I'm, you know, I didn't live back then, but I feel like people were a little bit more desensitized to death than we are now because the life expectancy is longer. You know, like, we're desensitized in our own way, but, I mean... Getting a cut could kill you that in the 1800s. True. Like, Thank, people shout out to died every day, B. Like, <laughs> literally. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm like, it's just, it's just weird. We need to, I feel like we need to make sure that the laws are timely, that the laws that we have, we need to go back through and look at our Constitution and make sure that they add up to what is occurring in 2016. Because there's exactly. no reason why and then on top of another thing i think about is this big behind have you seen a picture of the gun that he used supposedly that gun was humongous how did you get into the club Mm -hmm. how did did you get into a club with a military gun that's my question a trench in the middle of florida in that makes sense but nobody patted him down like Like my whole thing is like you know these are the questions that people need to be asking going into bliss ah I think we're in the room with an assassin. I don't want to say so, oh. so, <laughs> I'm joking. But no, like. He was in the military. Oh, thank you for your services to our country. Military. Okay. No, we. I feel like whenever someone, whenever you yeah. see someone's in the military, you need to thank them for their service to the country because they really didn't have to unless, they, you know, the Especially draft. Especially black people because we really don't have to. You know. <laughs> And also because every I always tell my dad that he was a punk because he's the only one who didn't serve in the military. No, my dad. I was like, Dad, you, I was like, Dad, you're a little punk. He was like, I wasn't going. To work. My dad's a little rebellious. He was like, I wasn't going to war for America. That's what my dad said too. But my grandpa, all my uncles, everybody else. 
was in the military. My uncle was one of the uh, sheriffs down south. Like, they're about that life. So shout out to all of our service members. You are the real MVPs. Really, because black people really don't have a reason to fight for this country, but we do anyway. We do anyway. It, it For multiple reasons. I know where I'm from, a lot of people joined the Marines. And it was literally, to, but it was, to, it was to the point where it was like, I thought y'all would have feel proud. Like, how come everybody's a Marine? Like, everybody is a Marine. Shout out to all my friends. Shout out to Jen Fan and Angelique. Shout out to Justice, Justice's dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Kristen Kel- and everybody else who who joined the military. But a lot of people were sitting back thinking, like, you know, college education. I had a lot of friends who said that. And then as I got older, I was like, but is a college education worth your life? And that just makes me think right. about the cost of co- of higher education in the United States. Why? Why does why is it so expensive that people are like, oh, I could just join? Like that was a very casual conversation that people used to have in high school. Right. And I know for me, I was like, I'll be damned. But I mean, that's because like my dad, I'm a punk. But <laughs> and also because like you said, I don't I don't really feel that I'm not pressed uh, right. to have, not, to, to risk know, my life. I mean, we I'm not brave songs enough. In, in elementary school about you're a grand old flag and all that jazz. But it was so sad. No. When I found out all the things that really happened. <laughs> I was like, I have been lied to. I've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. Like, and you know, I don't know about your school, but in my school, you didn't have to say the Pledge of Allegiance, but you had to stand up. Really? Which I respect because at the end of the day, for me personally, you're standing up and respecting all the people who fought and died and all the people who went to war on behalf of this country. You know, you, we don't have to agree with what this country has done, what it's built upon, but we cannot disagree or argue the fact that people have laid down their lives and risked their lives. So it is very disrespectful to just be like, let me sit down. Well, but yeah, you didn't have to say it. That's that's lit. I mean, <laughs> Your school key, was different. I mean, not that they necessarily enforced that you, you're not saying the pledge, you got to say it. Like, mm-hmm. I remember after a certain point when you're older, you're like, not cool. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're just, I'm just going to stand. <laughs> I'm just going to stand because I'm a junior play, now and whatever. juniors don't Right, see. right. But it's, it's so it, it wasn't necessarily out of rebellion. It's just being a stupid teenager. <laughs> like, we had you know, so much, we felt like we just had so much to prove. We like, really did. For what? No reason. Absolutely nothing. To a bunch of people who, no, I don't know. Let's, let me not. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yes. Speaking of which, uh, rest in peace to the young lady from Philadelphia who was celebrating her graduation, her high school graduation, and was killed at Pulse as well. And you know, one thing, another going back to another thing, I feel like somebody's auntie. And another thing, another. people saying, "Oh, well, they shouldn't have been at the gay club." I've been to a gay club, Nelly's. Nelly's, the town in DC. Like we, they're we lit. Part, like they're really fun and really lit. And so, are you gonna like how you don't know how many people were in there who were Christian? One of the victims who went to who was at the club was supporting her son because she wanted to let him know that she was that he was loved and cared about, and she was trying to understand his lifestyle and the, who he was as a person. Are you are people really saying that she deserved to die, to die too? Like that that's crazy. No one deserves to die. Especially not, not like that. that. Like, maybe if you out here smoking cigarettes every two moments. <laughs> <laughs> or if you've killed other people in the way, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And maybe you need to, I don't know. I don't know, but. <sighs> That's kind of, you know, kind of. And then, you know, going back to the race issue, we just watched that video. We did watch a video. So we just watched a video as we were preparing our topics for the show and going over everything we wrote over the week because, you know, prior preparation we watched a video where a young lady who was in the club she's a survivor she was shot in the leg glad she's recovering said that she heard the 911 call and then after the the gunman asked are there any black people in here and so she being a black girl she was afraid i would have not said anything i would have been like like, peep the melanin but i'm not trying to say because you don't know you don't know if that's in your favor or against your favor you don't know what it is in in most in the majority of of america it's not in your favor so it's best that you keep quiet but she said uh there was another man who was next to her in a different who was like kind of in the stall that she was in and it was like oh there's about six or seven of us in here and allegedly the journalist in me won't say that he said allegedly the gunman said my issue is not with you you've gone through enough in this country 
And that, and that alone. I was like, boom, pop, bop. Because there's been multiple instances where people have said, other groups around the world have said that. So... Because we've gone through too much. And the world is watching, and they watch what we go through. But it was just crazy. So if that is true, what do you think about that? Honestly, it, it surprised me that she had, you know, that she had came out and said that. Yeah, that was bold. Uh, I was thinking, yeah, stuff. I was like, oh, I that was, was like, oh, snap. She really, like, she said that. But it's like, who's going to pop her? They weren't there. Right, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not surprised at what he said at all. Because other countries look to us, look to us meeting black people in America, mm-hmm. and model their rebellions after our our struggle. That's true. Off of our civil rights movement, off of our Black Lives Matter movement, mm-hmm. people look to black people because we we have this unshakable drive that right. will keep us going. This resilience and it has, yes, it has kept us going for centuries. So that's the stock we're made of. So next time you're feeling insecure, remember that. But that was just very wild to hear. And it's it's sad because there were a few black people who died. The rest in peace to the brother from FAMU that passed yes. away. He was also a member of the military. And I believe a member of – he was a Kappa. So I'm um, sorry. I I just had a thought. So the reason why I just went into a daze and thought about that is because there was a lot of people from the Latino community who were actually the majority of the people who were killed right. if it was were Latino. Latino. Right. Yeah. And that 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 was very disappointing. A lot of them were from Puerto Rico as I was reading through and reading about their life stories. And I was just like, wow. Shout out to all my Puerto Ricans. My grandfather was Puerto Rican. He was Afro-Latino, though. So if you're Puerto Rican and you're listening, lest we forget okay. our real history. Okay. Because sometimes y'all try it, dot com. Sometimes but a I lot still of the love Caribbean y'all. Try, countries try it, dot com. Okay? Because white, whitewashing is real. It is. Real. It's super real. And we, you know what? We need to have a whole conversation about that. Whitewashing in the Latino community. We will invite you in to have your thoughts about it. I will post it on on all of the Latino pages that I follow, all of the Afro-Latino pages that I follow. We can get down gritty because okay. we need to. And the Caribbean, the Caribbean in general needs to. Actually, I was having a conversation with my friend Shay, and she said that she was surprised that a lot, of, when we were in Europe, that a lot of people were very shady towards African and Caribbeans. And it's like, I don't know why you're surprised. Like, you know, she was surprised to hear that, like, they preferred black Americans, black African-Americans over Africans and Caribbeans. And she was like, all right. And I was like, well, don't look like that. Like, not everybody likes y'all everywhere. But it's because of the history of what they learned. Like, she was telling me how her mother's Trinidadian and that she didn't know there were slaves in Trinidad. Because all they are taught in history is that they conquered the Like, it's them. And so that's one thing that does blow me. And I was thinking about this after my conversation with her is a lot of people who are not from America are like, oh, how come black Americans can't get it together, this, that, and the third? And I'm like, one thing that y'all forget is that even after slavery, we were never citizens of this country until the 60s. And half y'all parents are born in the 60s. And that could change at any moment. Exactly. We are still three-fifths of a person. Barely. So that if you're if anyone's ever confused about that, about why we are the way we are, why it's taking us so long to get our ish together... Once y'all got your independence and all that jazz, y'all were citizens and y'all ran your country. We dealt with Reconstruction and Jim Crow. And now it's like, what is this called? Post-racial era? Right. This delusional thing that people enjoy talking about, the post-racial era. So, you know... But, I mean, if you agree or disagree, I'd gladly take your comments, questions, comments, or concerns. It just goes back to the fact that white people have been rewriting history for centuries. Speaking of rewriting history, some of these, some outlets don't know how to write news headlines. And let me tell you why. I majored in broadcast journalism have a whole degree spent four years studying it and I'm looking at these headlines and they're so misleading saying that the Orlando massacre was the largest instance of gun 
violence in America. Like, that's not real. And then, but have the nerve to put in the article since 9-11. Now, let's think about everybody you know. Half of nobody reads anything after the headline. Half of nobody. You really have to be passionate about news or really have a desire for information. Because if you think about it, we're part of the microwave generation. We like quick, instant as Whatever. soon as you see the good headline, you're right. like, oh, you're like, oh, I know what happened. You're ready to talk to your family about it. You're ready to talk to your friends. You're about to educate people. Unless you read the article, you don't know what you're talking about. So we're going to go through and talk about some of the society, some of society's massacres that people have erased over time. Okay. Let's, um, you want to do one more? Uh, 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 you know, just... So I guess first the East St. Louis massacre in 1917, and that had about 200 to 700 casualties. Then there was the Arkansas massacre in 1919, and that was 854 casualties. Then the Tulsa massacre in 1921, 300 to 3,000 deaths, which is crazy that they're that that that's such a spectrum. Exactly, like that's crazy. Anyone that knows anything about the Tulsa massacre, that was actually the massacre of Black Wall Black Street. Wall Street, exactly. And we saw that whole documentary. We watched a that. whole documentary with uh, what was the organization we were with? Amnesty, Amnesty International. International. And that alone, they didn't, they dropped bombs on that town. On the town. Set it and that, ablaze. Can we just, like, briefly, can we just, like, divert to this? I'm always so confused about all of the white people who say, I'm sick of black people, go back and do this, blah, 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 get your own. We did all that with Black Wall Street. We had our own. We had our banks. We had our movie theater. We were doing everything we needed to do. And somehow... Y'all still make your way. Like, what, what do y'all want? Like, just let us do us. Like, Can do, we be do great? you. Do you, and we do us, and then that's it. But the thing about that is I feel like what's similar to members of the LGBT community, it doesn't matter what you do, someone's going to have an issue with it. Oh, Because if you think about it, members of the LGBT community ain't worried about it. Like, they're really not. Because they've been out here forever. They really, they're really okay. not. And I hate people who when they find out someone is gay or bi or anything all of a sudden start looking at them sideways because just because they are doesn't mean they're thinking about you right and then that goes to the whole trans bathroom issue why are we talking about this when there are places with unisex bathrooms one your house has a unisex bathroom (gasps) okay like but you're free (laughs) and then on top of it i'm about to get a little shady some of y'all worried about these trans bathrooms weren't worried about that suspect cousin, uncle, or whoever being around y'all kids. Now, let, let's let talk because we, we, we really want to have a conversation. We know. know a few people who we've looked at sideways and let them rock. So I feel like, no. If we're really concerned about that, if that's the real problem, if that's the real issue, then I'm a just- young... Right. A young man would have never gotten six months, probably going to get out in three months for raping an unconscious body. But alas, I slumber. You know, we always got to bring it back full circle. Okay. Cause Lord. You, there's just so much, there's so many skeletons that a lot of black families hide. Exactly. And just won't talk about, but they'll be so vocal about something so basic. And, and I feel like it's because that's the, that's the, that's where a lot of people feel their power lies. But it's like at the end of the day. Even if you do kill someone, you're not killing who they are. You're not killing their truth, period, point blank. Like, you don't have enough power to do that. And for all of you, like I said, who say that y'all are doing this in the name of God, to have an issue with the creation is to have an issue with the creator. Boom. And although you may not agree or you think it's the spirit of homosexuality or whatever you may think, God knew what they were going to go through. Regardless of whether you think people can be healed or delivered or whatever, God knew what was going to happen. So, again, to have an issue with their journey, to have an issue with them as a creation, is to have an issue with the creator. And, I mean, if you're ready to box with God, prosper. And it's not God's fault that this happened. This is a people issue. People do the things we do to each other. Exactly. And then put God's name on it. Exactly. 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 So it's just like people that blame religion for the world's problems. I know. I have someone like that, and he's so funny to me. I went to high school with him, and he always just has, like, one thing, I guess because, like, 
the way I feel about it, I feel like it goes both ways. If you don't believe in God, that's your personal choice. And that's beautiful, great, however, whatever. I really, I personally don't care. But those of you who really go out of your way to attack people who do, you have a seat. You're doing the same exact thing that you don't want people to do to you. Like, you do you. Like, why every time somebody posts something about God, you have to comment? No one cares. Hurt you. Like, and that's why. I, but I asked him that. I said, "But who hurt you?" He was like, "Well, you're assuming that I've been hurt. Clearly, because you go out your way. Most people. This is personal. Who do that have been hurt in some way by the church or someone in their life who who did things in the name of Christ or any religion for that matter. Exactly. Listen, I just feel like I even have a I have a friend that that doesn't have the answers to their life and is not willing you go laugh at me and is not willing to try Jesus not willing to try God in general and it's like okay I guess for me like I said I'm biased I was raised in the church very much so but one thing my mom instilled in me very early is that I cannot serve God for you I cannot have a relationship with God for you you need to know for yourself so I've done my own soul searching journey you know I come to my own conclusion but A lot of people, and this is bigger than religion to me, if you've been miserable in in, it's not actual depression, you know what I mean? Because you cannot tell someone with a mental illness to get over it or to change their thinking. Like, that's not a thing. But, you know, if you keep handling life's circumstances and the manner you've been handling them and wondering why you're not getting a different result, it's you. You know, like... Something has got to change. We stand in our own way. Always. Uh, almost 100% of the time. Always. And it's like, oh, but well, I feel like... And I just feel like sometimes having that relationship or having that whatever with the higher being that some people have and that even me personally that I have, it takes the burden off of me. Like, that's that's how it works for me. I don't feel like I'm in completely... And mind you, I'm a control freak. If you know me, I'm everyone who knows me knows that I'm very controlling in my own way. To be free spirit, it's very different. It's weird. But it's like, that's the reason why I don't stress about certain things. You know, we all stress. But some things I'm like. You know what? <laughs> let go and let go. Because <laughs> if I keep thinking about it, I'm going to go crazy. Exactly. And then I have people in my life who are driving themselves crazy. And it's like, for, so when you when, when are you going to try something different? Ooh. It's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back on track. And uh, another massacre was the Rosewood Massacre in 1923. And that resulted in 150 deaths. And Wounded Knee. Remember the movie Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee? No. Oh, girl. <laughs> I bawled, yo. I cried my little heart out. I was like, because these babies, it was just a visual. Whenever you have a visual element of all the things that you read in the history books, it just makes it real. And it it just reminds you that this is really what it was. These Native Americans were slaughtered. And we always hear about it. You know, we're used to like, oh, you know, small, but like, boom. Seeing that in movie form, that was OD. I mean, it's just like watching 12 Years a Slave. That was another movie. That I was just like, I'm, I'm, no, absolutely not. I'm and, over it. You know, it's just the fact that America will allow us to remember certain things at certain times is just annoying to me. Because you'll, you'll perpetuate, you know, the slave narrative like, yeah, because we can, we can do that again. But, or, but you won't, you know, you won't talk about how you used to kill entire towns when the great migration was happening right when and that's one thing I, why why north. do you feel like we they hold so hard to the slave narrative like jim crow like people forget that jim crow was a thing like my mother's birth certificate says colored capital c-o-l and she was born in the 60s it's real like it is it's super real she was born in augusta georgia and <laughs> And I actually, it's because I stumbled upon her birth certificate when I was home looking for my birth certificate. And I was like, she always talked to me about it. But when, you when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is real. And mind you, my mother's father's Puerto Rican. And when it came to his race, it said color too. So that's what kind of blows me that 
people of color try to act like they're not because like my mom always says when she was growing up she was like there was no chinatown and even if you look down south like chinatown is not really a thing for real because no. them southern white folk ain't having that what chinatown it's white and black ain't no chinatown bitch. And my mom, my mom said she grew up with Native Americans, the Native Americans, uh, African Americans, Chinese, and uh, Jews all tended to live in the same neighborhood. Well, Jews were kind of rich though, so they can they lived on the other side of the neighborhood. But it's just very interesting how now we are so divisive that it's like. At any point, if you really want to be real, these white people can come back and pop everybody. So you might as Everyone. well just. Everyone. And I feel Everyone. like that's another reason why I'm very hesitant about the whole entire give up the guns thing. Because I know. That's real. Because one thing that's about real. it. Because even if we gave up the guns, they'd still have them. Hey, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. They'd still have them. Because I don't know about anybody. Let me not say that. That's how people catch a case. I'm going to, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna, listen. I mean. Heads will roll. That's all I'm saying. Heads will roll. I'm not the one. Like, I, I don't know. It's weird. And the fact that, that, that people really thought that you could run up on someone's property and burn crosses. Like, I'm here for Malcolm X and that shotgun. Okay. I say oh all the God. time. My family is from the deep south. You can run up on this property if you want to. Run up if you want to. When I read Malcolm X's book, and I seen how many times they tried to kill him, oh, my goodness. Listen, even with people coming to people's house to fight them and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, you crazy. I've had that happen before. Boop. You remember your hair being in that shit, girl. Don't do it. But I'm just saying, I think that's another reason why I'm so hesitant, too, because we know the people in power will have what they need to have, and I will not be out here like... I wish... If there was a way to to enforce this, like, this being... In a, a positive manner? Yeah. I agree. Because even... And also, like, my, one of my aunts has a gun. Like, she'd just be like... She calls it her girlfriend. She'd be like, yeah, because I got my girlfriend with me. I would call her on the phone. and be like, hey, auntie, you walking by? She said, girl, I'm not worried. I got my girlfriend with me. <laughs> and my cousin used to carry it, right? He used to have... Not carry. He used to just have it on his hip. I remember being like... Because <gasps> I... <laughs> and this is in Philly. This is in Pennsylvania. Bro. No, yeah. People... I remember my babysitter's... <laughs> her husband had a gun... And it was like it was locked up in this like mm-hmm. suitcase type of thing, but everyone was like everyone knew where it was. We we're all like, the guns. The, and no, guys. it's so stressful because you know what it is. Like guns being around them used to give me anxiety. I used to be like, especially as a child, like you, you know, I don't know what age you start knowing that type of stuff. Yeah, you just like no, you know, I just know that this not, is dangerous. I had it. one family member who I got okay. So if he's my cousin, I guess he's my cousin in law. He had swords. That j- <laughs> my sister and I were actually talking about that side. Those members of our family, they're the members of the family who live in Long Island, and people be out here trying to punk Long Island. I know I do it too, but they were like knuck if you buck crazy type stuff. And like he had, I remember walking into the room and his entire wall had swords, and I was like, "What are you gonna do with a sword?" <laughs> Somebody Yo, throws. I'm like, see. <laughs> wow. But it's just crazy because, you know, one one thing that Dr. Leon, shout out to Dr. Wilmer Leon, one of the top political scientists, black political scientists in the nation, they were talking about how, at this point, people can hire private militaries. Like they were saying, um, most the most people in the world are not noticing. This gentleman wrote a book about it that we're slowly going back to Game of Thrones style government. Meaning, if your family has enough money, we can buy we can it. buy protection mm. in the form of like militia. That's a problem. And now people want to talk about giving up guns. Oh no, knock on my door with an army. Uh uh-uh. uh. I guess this world is too messed up. This too. world is crazy. It's crazy. There's consequences and and it's sad. It's there's positives sad. and negatives behind everything and. I just want to know, like, why pe- why people can't just live, just live. If they're not having an issue with you, if it's not personal, if it's and not really, affecting your life, exactly, let and it go. We should say that to the whole country, though, because we're honestly America caused this problem, <laughs> bombing Iraq, Afghanistan, all these other the Middle East here. countries. Like the guy said, it was because of all these bombings that have been happening for years. Like, leave my country. Even though he was an American, technically. But, you know, that's what allegedly that's what he said. That he was sick of America bombing his country, which is 
that's kind of that's kind of real. That's like, real. I mean, like, I, uh, I mean, if can we are, not right? Like, can you not? Like, can you just not be do that? If people were got bombing like Puerto Rico, if people were bombing Anguilla, if people were bombing the entire continent of Africa for no reason per se, besides the fact that they even though control, people were bombing right. the entire continent. I mean, you know, right now, but oh yeah. Who's to, who's to say they're wrong for trying to defend their country? I mean, not in this way, right. obviously. Because that's the thing. It's like, one thing I will say, and then there's there's reports coming out about how allegedly he was on, was it the app called Jacked, which is like a gay meeting dating app, and then that he was like a regular at Pulse. So, you know, once again, if those if those allegations are all true, then America created him. The level of homophobia that we have now, granted, is not as bad as other countries because right. other countries people we'll are getting murdered every day. You to death. Still, still, but causing you like causing that level of self hatred that that's where you would begin because it could be a combination of everything. You know, it could that could be true. It could be true that bombing thing could be true. You know, it all could be true. Why did he choose Latin? You know, there's a lot of things that go on with that. But at the end of the day, the LGBT community really doesn't do anything to any community outside of it, period. Never really has. Probably never really will because they're so busy trying to just do them. I mean, sounds familiar. Sounds like, don't you know, know my community sounds like you know who was brought over here and boo then put to work and then told we couldn't read then when we finally could read we could can't we can't have your own businesses and all this other nonsense but you you still brought me here that's the point we no one had a choice yeah that's the difference that people forget between like Black African Americans, descendants of the African slave trade, dropped off in the southern portions of the United States. And the Car- Caribbean we countries. We are not. Well, wait, because that's changing about what I'm about to say. We did not ask to come here. Those Im- who have immigrated from the Caribbean now, they've come to America by choice. They are indeed right. Americans. But the ones who were but the ones who were brought up in the Caribbean period, that sounds like if y'all have issues with that, I'm talking about the United States of America, these 50 states, you cannot have an issue with us. You can't have an issue with me. Well, you can't have an issue with two of my family members. But, you know what I mean? Whatever. Either way, the slave trade resulted in them too. Like I said, Puerto Rican grandparent, Bohemian great-grandparent. They came to America by choice. Everything else, like, if anyone wants to get jazzy, my grandma's technically half Native American. Who finna pop her? Right. No one. Nobody. <laughs> no one. <laughs> Christina's family's from Anguilla. Some of her family. My uh, dad's half is from Anguilla. The, I'm third generation, so they came here a little minute ago. Right. But, I mean... And then on top of it, so for the for those who are not African American, for those who are African and Caribbean, you you're talking about the American dream now, you madam here. I wonder. Like are we the land of free or no? Like it, it, like nah. and at this point, no. Nah. <laughs> like it's like some like a post said on the book of faces. Can't go to church, can't go to the club, can't be part of the LGBT community, can't be black, can't be a woman, can't be this, can't be that. So what can I do? In my house. That that was it a woman or a man that someone came up to their house and shot them. Like opened the like they opened the door and then they shot them. That was one of the many shootings that were happening last year. Why? Like right after the Charleston shooting, which really threw me. It's just like Listen let me tell you something <laughs> I'm gonna be very honest If these type of people Who gonna run up Roll up into the church And roll up into clubs And roll up at people's doorsteps With guns and shoot people Then I'm sorry I'm not giving up my gun I don't have a gun But Actually y'all don't need to know Whether or not I may I may I may not have a gun. You know what and, I mean I don't know You know I, I totally no. support That And But I support You know people getting guns The right way Exactly Go get a license Right 
You do not you need do. a military style weapon. You don't, because we're not in the military. We're not out here. We're not in constant warfare like other countries. Right. You don't need it. You have no reason. Get for you it. a nice pistol. A nice shotgun. I don't really know guns like that. I don't know BB gun. I don't know whatever whatever people used to have. Whatever. And just Float chill. Your boat. And you know I understand protecting your family, but don't sit here and go out looking for people to kill for what? Who are you to take a life? Exactly. No one. No one. But these wow. So we got ten minutes. Girl. Boom. So, in the last 10 minutes, we're going to talk about things in a little bit differently. Go to state. <laughs> and Cleveland. So, I, I mean, Cavs fans, y'all had a victory last night. That's but cool. we all know who's really about to win. Steph Curry with the shot, boy. Okay. We're, but, we you know, it's, biased. it's currently 3-2 Golden State. Next game is going to be game six on Thursday. So, we hope that everybody tunes in. And who are you rooting for? Who are you rooting for? Hmm. And why? And, you know, people get mad at everybody who likes Golden State now because they're like, y'all some bandwagoners, blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm not jumping on y'all bandwagon. If Steph Curry got traded, then I'd be a fan. Like, I'm a Steph Curry fan. I've always been that person. I've never been a huge, like, individual sports team fan. Right. I've always been a player fan. Like, I loved Iverson. Back when Michael Jordan I loved was Michael Jordan, right, exactly. before he was a f- he was, you know. He was something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he was a, with the Bulls, people was on the Chicago Bulls. Right. Half of y'all ain't even from Chicago talking about Chicago Bulls. With right. Chicago Bulls jerseys Always talking about Jordan Year. Jerseys. Talking about Jordan Year. But and you want to sit back and try to pop everybody. Talk about, shoot. Every time you say hashtag Jordan Year, you're actually, like, promoting Michael Jordan, his number in Chicago. Whatever. Exactly. You know. Exactly. I'm actually low-key being petty. It's just because y'all keep trying to call people bandwagon jumpers. Right, when you all know this is what y'all do. If, you, if you're from a certain state, you know, the, usually people follow suit and root with their state. Actually, I have a question, and I hope somebody calls and answers this next week. D.C., how are you a Cowboys fan <laughs> and you're from D.C.? You a Cowboys fan? Why? Whoa. Talk about America's team. Mm. Talk about I'm America's team. Oh, I ain't mad at that. Well, pick someone that's not the Cowboys. George Preston Marshall was the president, and they told him, the NFL told him, if you didn't get a good wow. player by next wow. year, you can go to the NFL. Boop. The last team. That's why a lot of people don't like the way you do it. That's lit. Unknown black Support. history facts. All right, little known black history <laughs> facts. Hashtag know your history before you move to a city. Say nothing. D- uh, but why Cowboys? Griffin Stadium was on Western University. Griffin Stadium was the first Redskins stadium. You know where it was? Where Howard University Hospital. Wow. Well, on my campus, and they didn't want to have black players. Play. Wow. And they didn't want to have black players. People love that. You know, to be honest, that's why low key, I'm not really a Phillies fan. The Phillies were very racist towards Jackie Robinson. So I remind myself that I was born in New York and Yankees. Like, I was just like. For those of you who couldn't hear Reg, he just informed us. Oh, yes. He just dropped so much knowledge. DC was the last football team to have black players on it. They was the about Redskins. to get kicked out of the NFL for that, and it's crazy that y'all would rather get kicked out of the NFL. Y'all rather ha- y'all would have rather have to be told that than just like why y'all so mad. And if it's not you, who's mad? Ask your grandma. Huh? Bobby Mitchell was the first player. Shout Bobby out to Bobby Mitchell. Mitchell. For real, we should have him on the show. We need to we, find him. For real though, he that's cool. Listen, he said, "All right, I'm done <laughs> dropping knowledge. That's cool because now we only got like we got like you know what I mean like eight minutes." <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was really dope history. And shout out again, shout out to Howard because that was the first they played their first game. But that's so terrible. And it's like now it's so crazy how we go we went from being unwanted players of every single team <laughs> to being the most to sought being out. like the most sought out athletes. Like you know, if you're you're a black person, and you go to a majority white school. Um, that you tend. To have to like people expect you to sing or to dance (laughs) or to be an athlete, right? But meanwhile, wasn't inviting us to their award shows, 
had a lot of black artists move to Europe because they couldn't deal with America's racism anymore. And now it's all we're known for. Oh, like it's crazy. Goodness. Funny how times change. And I wonder how time is going to continue to evolve. You know? What's going to change? What's going to be expected? For example, black women are the fastest group, growing group of entrepreneurs. Is the, I, I want that to be an expectation of black people now. Oh, yeah, black people do this, this, this and we also handle business. Like, Okay. Because it seems like they only expect us to entertain at this point. Like, exactly. Like, we've got that niche. Yes, for consumption. We are entertainers. We are just here Athletes. to put on a show or put in some work on the field. We're not here to build hospitals and cure cancer and things of that nature maybe because you keep killing us but you know i digress i don't know (laughs) oh yes the inventor of lasik eye surgery was a howard alumna she was a howard alumna she sure was she probably stayed in the quad too she probably did (laughs) (laughs) but yes it's just interesting we have to take back our narrative and and you know i just feel like the we see based on how these stories have been handled thus far, whether we're talking about trans, uh, a figure transcending race, yeah. whether we're talking about the deadliest massacre in America, those who control the media control the masses. Malcolm X said it, you know, and everyone knows that. We sure do. Quick to make the victim the villain as we've seen with with many of our police brutality cases. And it's all because the media controls the narrative. And again, it's all because half of y'all don't read anything past the headline. Reading is fundamental. It's so fundamental. And then on top of it, you have to question the media. If you're trained correctly as a journalist, you are taught to question everything. If you're trained correctly as a journalist, you have taken political science, sociology, psychology. If you are trained correctly as a journalist, mind you, I'm biased because I went to Howard and that's what we had to do. And also because my professors didn't play that. They didn't play that at all. They said no matter what the story is, you get to the truth. No matter how you feel about it. And see, that's another thing. I'm too opinionated. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just... That's why we got those op-eds. And I knew, yeah, and I knew way back when that, you know, I'm not made to be in the middle of the hurricane. Like, I'm live from, that was never my portion. But those who are, you know, you don't want to be a puppet to anything. You don't want to be fed lies. Always read multiple, multiple, multiple outlets. Always look at multiple sources. Always do that because if you look, stories will conflict. For sure. And then at the end of the day, to be real, media comes down to the bottom line, and the bottom line is money. So whatever story sells is the one that's getting the most that's getting the most play. <laughs> and that's just is what it is. And it's sad and it sucks, but that's why it's important. That's why black journalists, we need you. We need us. Very we, much so. We need us in every, every single arena, field. Like, especially the ones that are giving the voice to the voiceless. Exactly. Period point blank. Shout so out to no, Melissa Harris Perry. <laughs> so, right. So whether or not your portion, whether you're a playwright, whether you're a poet, whether you're a journalist, a psychologist, any of these different things, you need to use your platform to give a voice to the voiceless. Hear the cries of the people who are either too afraid to speak up and say what you would say. Don't have or, access. Or don't right, don't have the means to. To whom much is given, much is required. And you deserve to be fearless and standing up. For your people or just telling someone's truth. You have to be brave. Tell your truth. Right. Speak your truth. And it's painful. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's It's extremely painful, but... It's hard. But we have stories that are valid and we have stories that are worth being heard. And if you don't tell it... Somebody else is going to tell it wrong. Exactly. What did they say? They always say that... The story of the lion is told from that perspective. Something of that it's nature. Not, isn't told from the perspective of the lamb or something like that? You know, we sound crazy. I'm joking. Yeah, you know, we might. But you know what? Referencing Twilight We're going to find out. Yeah, no, yeah. You're talking about Twilight right now. But um, we have one minute. And in this last minute, we just like to thank you all for listening. Thank you all for sharing and posting and loving on us. And leaving comments and reviews. Please leave more. Comment on the show. Let us know what topics you'd like to talk about. Follow us on the Instagram. At, at Unapologetic Queens. 
And follow Christina at Mama underscore Unk and me at Hylia the Takeover. Spelled there's there's no it's not spelled jazzy or anything like that. We're we're pretty phonetic here. <laughs> right. We're just trying to be great. From our names to our insta names. You're but yes. Right thank you. We will definitely be finding more topics that you all care about queens and join the conversation we have a telephone number i mean i know we didn't tell it to you this time, <laughs> but we're gonna tell you next week so you better you better be ready we're just making sure we get our footing before we let you know what's right up. we don't want y'all to come at us crazy and be like <laughs> <laughs> but you know stick with us we're going places <laughs> peace out Wow.